And then Pinky. Okay, we're gonna start and get okay. Oh and yeah, cake stand. Oh, okay, hold on. Guys, this is the BMW R9T. After riding the Ducati Supersport, I started thinking that maybe my true passion lies with the nice thumping twins rather than something more along the line of an inline four, because I started enjoying it quite a bit. So here we are, completely stock standard R9T. It's not the racer, not the urban, it's the standard model, which is probably the one I would get. It's not too hardcore in the seating position like the racer. Uh, but it's quite uh, modern retro looking, unlike the Urban. This is the ideal bike for me, I think. And it almost cut out on me, that's weird. Okay. Oh, weird position. It feels like I'm reaching quite far forward. Cool, so it's a Boxer Twin, 1200 cc's. Shakes quite a bit, I think it's the shaft drive and the Boxer engine. Much like the Ducati, it doesn't like uh, the low revs it likes to be revved past about two and a half three thousand which is a twin trade i assume now that i've used quite a few of them the seat is quite soft and spongy not as aggressive as the ducati was and lots of engine braking it's got the popping like all bmws have and there's quite a lot of shake when you really accelerate it I think it has to do both with the shaft drive because obviously there's a torque from it and then it also has the boxer engine which is you know punching side to side like that yeah so far so good the seat is quite comfortable you can easily do long distance on this lots of low down torque and once again, BMW has one of the best stock sounding exhausts that I've ever heard. I mean, this is a twin, it somehow made it past noise regulations, don't ask me how. But the shaking is something to get used to. For sure. So my weight is a lot on my wrists and... It's not like it's not like a standard naked bike, it just feels different, if that makes sense. Uh, the nice thing about the engine all the way forward is you don't have to really worry about burning yourself on any engine components by your ankles, so that's a bonus, right? It feels very different to... wow, okay, that, those brakes... Um, okay... Yeah, those brakes are good, but you have to pull the lever halfway in before it actually does anything. That's not very settling. If you know what I mean, I mean, I suppose if you got used to it, but... I can feel a bit of heat on my legs now, don't know where it's coming from, don't know if it would be bad if I was stopped. But it's not like it's bad heat, I can just feel heat washing over me, but that's because, you know, I have the big blocks right in front of my legs here. One thing I don't like is, as you get on the throttle, especially if you go a little bit hard, we're from no revs, I want to make that clear. So if you're not accelerating and then you get harder on the throttle, the bike doesn't settle itself a little bit. So I wouldn't necessarily put this as a canyon carver. This is a good bike, don't get me wrong. So far from what I can tell, nice bike, but I don't, it's almost like the uh, Honda VFR's VTEC. You don't want to be mid corner when it kicks in because it's just going to unsettle you, knock you a bit. And I feel the same way about the uh, R9T here. Yeah, so it looks like commuting, you know, as long as you're not in bumper to bumper traffic, because I don't know what that's like on this bike. Seems okay. It's holding its own at the low revs. But like all twins, you got to kind of keep the revs around two and a half-ish more to be able to comfortably uh, cruise in that gear. Otherwise, you got to play with the clutch. So this motorcycle has about 100 horsepower, I think it's 96.5 at the rear wheel if I want to, so I'll put up the exact stats, uh, power, torque. The torque is around 110 newton meters I think, again exact stats will be up now. Um, which is more torque than the Super Sport S, less power. I can feel that, I can feel that this bike is oriented more to torque. 
Kyoto overtaking ability is like. I didn't really get to do this with the Super Sport, but let's see what the R19 feels like in these corners. Okay, it's taking the bumps with the stride. There's a bit of wallowing. Lots of torque, gonna ride that torque curve. And plenty of top end power. Very bouncy suspension, which is good for around town, not sure about up here. Uh, it's non-adjustable from the looks of things. So unfortunately you'd have to deal with the front end feeling that. The rear I need to see if it's adjustable for compression and rebound. Because it feels a little bit washy up there. Front end doesn't actually feel too bad, it's the back that's a little neither here nor there, you know? Okay, you don't want to let off the power on this bike. Yeah, it's very jerky when you get onto the power if you're cut if you've uh, chopped throttle. So beware of that. I don't know. It's. I think this bike isn't really for, if you want to go for a fast run, this is more of a, a fun commuter, rip it up around town, but on these twisty roads it's not exciting me much, if that makes sense, you know? I mean, it's very good fun, but... It's not exciting me, if that makes sense. I hope it does. Okay, let's park her down and have a chat. Okay guys, this is the BMW R9T, the standard version. Big 1200 pair, uh, boxer twin. Shaft drive in the back. So let's have a look at the suspension. Um, it's got a little twist knob there. I don't know if that's for servicing or if that's actual adjustments. I don't know, you guys let me know. I'm not sure. Um, Non-adjustable forks, non-adjustable shock. This is the standard pipe. It makes a great sound. I don't actually think you would need to get any aftermarket exhaust for this bike. Look, if you want more noise, you can always get one, but it's not necessary per se. Um, the ride comfort is good. I didn't feel uncomfortable at any point. Brakes feel a little underpowered. I'd like something a little bit more punchy though. The performance of this bike isn't that much, so I don't think you need better brakes, it's just my personal opinion. Um, there's plenty of leg room, you don't have to worry about bumping your legs up here. I'm sure in the winter it would be very welcome to have heats on the legs. I've just noticed this gap here. I don't think the seat is... If there's no loser seat, is, that's a little bit disappointing BMW. This must be high quality. Looks wise, this bike is pretty awesome. It's hit or miss if you don't like the pods. Uh, you got your ram air intakes there. Oh, just on the one side. It's a modern ra uh, cafe racer. Kind of retro. If you want the real cafe racer looking thing, you go for the cafe racer version. This is BMW going back to its roots. Uh, I twist the throttle and even when I'm quite hard on the throttle in the corners, it's it feels a bit sluggish in the corners, if that makes sense. Um, hydraulic braking clutch. Electronics, I haven't even checked. I'm assuming it has ABS and traction control. Every BMW nowadays has. Uh, let's turn the dash on. 
of course we got our clock there we've got our service date that's quite cool February okay so it's due for service uh, fuel consumption I think it would tell you if you're low there's your ABS lights there's a warning light and revs to about eight and a half something like the Ducati Super Sport revved I think to around 11 but Ducatis make the higher revving twins so it's understandable you got your you know, run-of-the-mill petrol gauge you got your info button let's see what happens okay cool so that changes here you click info it tells you your range your fuel consumption to start you just keep it in neutral or clutch in stand up where's the starter you got adjustable levers on both sides okay that's cool so you can pull the levers further in further out pretty nice looking bar ends I like this uh, design on the tank with the brushed aluminium it looks really cool with the spike you got standard bulb indicators that doesn't look too bad I don't know where you'd stick a plates if you do a tail tidy because have to come out flat so guys let's get this bike back to BMW and we'll see what I pick up on the way it also sounds a little bit like an old V8 starting up so again good or bad depending on what you want if you want your bike to sound like an old V8 American car then this is awesome definitely some more punch if you hold the throttle more open near the high revs but it's the whole ergonomics of the bike that aren't doing it for me as far as sporty riding goes also look at this clutch look at this brake pull here it's a lot of brake after pull The problem with the hydraulic brake or all these things is you can't really adjust it to make the pull any closer and that's one of the biggest problems I have with the old Jixxers especially like the seven, the current generation 750 is the brake doesn't engage till very late and it feels very spongy so although it stops you it's a spongy feel to it and you almost end up bottoming out the brake lever each time with brand new brake fluid and everything now apparently pads can help fix that as well as a few adjustments here and there but and like braided lines but you're still gonna have that problem so brakes are one of the big uh, deterring points for me on bikes because it's very difficult to fix them from what the factory puts on I was expecting a bit more of a premium bike uh, I don't know the exact price of the R9T but I'll put it up on the screen for you I don't know it doesn't feel like it maybe you have to get one of the racers or the urban or something to really get that premium feeling but this isn't doing it for me guys just have to be honest I want to stress though there's nothing wrong with this bike it's just not exciting me like the S1000R is very clinical and everything but it excites me whereas this bike is very clinical and it bores me a bit now look around town now I'm very happy that it's a bit of a boring bike and it doesn't have much character it's not cooking my backside it's not making it difficult to corner or making me nervous look uh, there's plenty of positives with this bike it's uh, comfortable good commuter has good looks good sound all that kind of stuff it doesn't have that je ne sais quoi you know what I mean but yeah guys if you're looking for a bike that's a modern retro racer uh, you want some good sound power torque you're going to use it predominantly around town that's where this thing should be park it in front of your favorite bar and get your friends to look at it this is one of the bikes you should go for I can't say anything bad about it for that purpose but if you're looking for a little bit of a a racer for the mountains something to hit those corners on a weekend and go around town and have some fun I don't think this is really a sporty enough bike for that but you guys be the, the judges of this 
I'll leave it up to you. You tell me what you thought. Am I being too harsh on this bike? Am I not being fair to its uh, pros and you know too harsh on its cons? Let me know in the comments down below. I've been Aero Rider, you've been awesome, and I'll see you in the next one. Ride safe.